We're kicking off our final European campaign in the quest and we're touted as comfortable favourites. They've clearly not seen the previous eight seasons. However, this season has started reasonably well since our last episode where we kicked off our final season of the quest with a victory over our old club Lokomotiva. We've made it to the top of the table. We've played five games. We've won four of them. And fortunately, the defeat that we've suffered has come in our most recent game blindsided me a little bit. It came out of the blue. After that 2-0 victory against Lokomotiva, we followed it up with another clean sheet in a very tight game against Rijeka. We needed a penalty in order to seal a 1-0 victory over that side. Then we got back-to-back 4-1 -back wins, and I started to feel a little bit more confident about the season. An air of fluidity started to sweep across the squad. We were scoring goals, playing well, creating chances. We beat Istra 4-1, and we looked every inch the table-topping team in this game. An XG of 2.71, 16 shots. Ten of them troubled the goalkeeper. Goals through Pavic, Sesla, Avia, and a penalty from Lelo meant that I'd started to rotate the squad a little bit, give players who I'd brought into the club a little bit of game time, give players who aren't able to speak a word of Croatian a little bit of game time, and we were still steamrollering teams. Istra, when we played them, were only one place behind us. They were second in the league as we were top. And then we won 4-1 in our next game against Sibenyuk. Again, another healthy number of shots and shots on target and XG. Two goals from Cole Palmer, another from Renier and one from Walukiewicz. Fortunately, whenever he plays, they just refer to him as Walu on the pitch. I think that's a bit more of a pronounceable nickname for me. But it meant that all four goal scorers were players that we'd bought into the club. I started to feel a little bit more positive about our transfer business. We'd made it to the top of the table. But then we travelled away to Varos Dyn. It looked on paper an innocuous game. They were sixth in the table. They'd not had a particularly strong start to the season. The game was relatively even. But suddenly, our forwards were misfiring. We had 17 shots during the game. Only four of them were on target. We were two goals down by half time. We read them the riot act. They responded at the start of the second half, but didn't produce any goals. They then scored a third, and we had a player sent off. By the time Parachet got his red card for an absolutely horrendous tackle, this game was absolutely finished. And it left me thinking maybe all of my optimism was a little bit premature because. We suddenly looked like complete strangers in this game. Players couldn't pick out a pass to each other. We couldn't find any of our shots troubling the goalkeeper. And when this red card happened for that terrible, terrible lunge, it made me think that maybe the success of the season is back in the balance after all. But perhaps a victory in Europe this evening will get our season back on track. Or perhaps it won't. It could be that maybe losing this tie might be a gift from the FM gods. We are in Europa League playoff round action. We've been drawn against Norwegian outfit Odd. We are the overwhelming favourites. Even I am cautiously optimistic about us making progress. But were we to lose, we wouldn't be out of European competition. We'd just drop into the Conference League. Now, we're going to go scouts honour on this. I'm not going to throw the tie just to make our way into the more easy of European competitions. We're going to play the tie with integrity, but just so you know, if we go out, tears might not be falling tonight. Instead, we might be in a competition that potentially is a little bit more winnable, although the holders of the Europa League are a Norwegian outfit as well. Mulder made it all the way to the final last year, and they managed to win it, so it gives us a little bit of hope that if we were to make it as far as the knockout rounds, then there's a chance we might be able to go all of the way. The final that they had was also against a team that I would consider ourselves relatively the equal of in Swiss outfit young boys. This game went all the way to penalties, but if two teams like Mulder and Young Boys can get all the way to the Europa League final, it gives us a little bit of hope that we might be able to as well, if this is the competition that we remain in. For tonight's game, we've got all of our first choice players available, and we're going to go with a very familiar lineup, playing many of the players that have been with the club for a number of seasons. Lots of them have come through the youth intakes. 
We've been giving time to players like Cole Palmer, who's come in and actually done very, very well in a position that is unfamiliar to them. They've got two goals in two starts and three appearances. We're going to leave them out of the squad tonight as they are struggling for a little bit of fitness. And we want to play our players who are a little bit more accustomed to playing each other. Renier has also been gaining more game time. Three starts now, four appearances, a goal, an assist. Another player that looks like they are going to settle in to that new position that we're crafting out for them. But today, we're going to go with the familiar. We're going to play our fullbacks who've been at the club for a while. So that means Ricard Sanchez and our Slovenian left-back Kompon Bresnic are going to be playing on the flanks for us. Out wide, we're going to go with the tried and trusted Vidovic. Tried and trusted on the pitch, not on the training field. And the youngster Petr Ishak. We're going to play those two cutting in from the wide positions. We're going to go with Milanovic and Oso up front. Milanovic is the player who attracted the most attention from foreign clubs during the transfer window. Not been very good so far this season. They've made four appearances, three starts, no goals, just the one assist. The jury's a little bit out as to whether they might keep their starting place. As we do have young Ante Pilcic on the bench waiting to burst into the squad. The only trouble is they've had three starts this season and they've not scored or got an assist. And their average rating is just 6.57. They still have plenty of time to develop, although not with us at the helm of the club. And they're going to start on the bench tonight. A morale boosting victory is just what the doctor ordered. Let's get out there and see if the good doctor delivers. And we are underway. We are the home side for the first leg. We'd like to try and get a couple of goals on the board before we head out to Norway if we can. We're going to bring you both legs of this tie during this episode. And hopefully it's going to be one that allows us to progress to the league phase of the Europa League. We're 13 minutes in. We're coming forward for the second time in this game. Here's our left back playing it into Parashek, who's in the team purely because he's going to be suspended for the next few league games. This could be his last appearance for a while. There is Valu at the back, bringing the ball forward. Avia's now got it. He finds a little ball to Vidovic. We clicked it over to Isek. He's volleyed one that whistles past the post. But it's an early warning shot for our Norwegian visitors that tonight we are hungry for goals. And we mean business. We're coming forward once more. Avia drifts the ball out to the left flank. He's played a volleyed one-two with our left back. Now the playmaker brings the ball forward and we're in. And that's a fortunate goal. It's cannoned off Usu. I think it's hit his shins and bounced into the net. But we, well, we've started strongly, so I guess we deserve this goal. And maybe I'm doing Usu a disservice. Maybe he had cat-like reflexes here and he meant to score this goal. No, it's just hit him. The goalkeeper has palmed it straight to his feet. It's cannoned off him without him even being able to react. And we find ourselves 1-0 in the lead. And we're in search of a second. We're coming forward once more. And Dave Benson Phillips has brought down one of our players. I think it was inside the area. It's Parashek who's got clipped. Should be a penalty this one. Indeed it is. And Vidovic is going to have the opportunity to double our lead from the penalty spot. He strides forward confidently. The goalkeeper makes a motion in the right direction but I think the pace of the penalty took it past him before he could fully dive and we now find ourselves 2-0 up. We're not getting too complacent as we've been in this kind of position before. Got to remember we were playing well against eventual winners of this competition Mulder when we were taking them on with Lokomotiva last season and when we went for the away tie out in Norway the game turned. And this is exactly why we're not getting carried away. As on 34 minutes, Odd are back in the game. It's Uwe Rossler, I think, that sends the cross in. And we've just been completely outjumped at the far post. Wolstedt is unable to get across quickly enough. That's their first effort of the game, and they've scored from it. And, well, suddenly we're not looking anywhere near as comfortable. I would say we are going to need another goal on the night at least in order to give us a cushion that might allow us to make progress when we take the tie out to Norway. We've had a great opportunity there. A point-blank shot at goal. And we've sent it wide. And we're 2-1 up at the break. We've got an XG that looks fabulous. Maybe not enough goals to show for it. 
The second half is underway and we are keeping an eye on our striker Milanovic. He's not had a very comfortable start to this game and maybe there's a little bit of a hangover from all of the transfer offers we rejected for his services during pre-season. He could have been joining Liverpool or Newcastle or Manchester United and we turned them all down and he's playing at a 6.6 .6 tonight. Another game where he's not really stepped up. And given the kind of performance that we would have hoped that he was going to, we're going to bring on in his place another very lively Croatian striker that we have in our squad. Stipislav Levaya. Good dribbling, finishing, first touch, balance, acceleration. They are going to come on in their place. We've also got Vidovic just struggling a little bit, as well as Pavic. So we're going to bring on our backup playmaker, Vincic. And we're going to rotate Vidovic for Rinier who's been playing very well in the league. And maybe this will give us a little bit of extra impetus heading in to the final 25 minutes of this game. We've clearly dominated it, but a 2-1 victory is a little narrow for my taste. I was hoping that we might be able to secure a more comfortable victory in this first leg. Alas, it seems that that is not going to be the case. We're going to make a final change at left back. We've got one more up our sleeve. I think we'll take Parashik off and we'll bring Astor Ranks off. And let's see whether those changes can help us find a third goal before the final whistle goes. It's going to happen. I think it needs to be now as we make our way towards the final minute of the 90. Lello, the substitute left back, has got the ball for a throw in. And here's Ranks, another of the substitutes. And Renier, the third of those players we've just brought on. He curls an effort over the bar. You can see from the number of shots we've had we probably should be at least one goal better off in this game. And this is going to be a proper highlight because we've got five minutes of added time to be played. And we've only played two and a half of it so far. And we've got the ball with our Portuguese left back, Lelo. He plays it to Vranks, Vincek, all of the substitutes heavily involved in this move. And Lelo fancies a little run. He gives it in to Renier. He's less selfish this time. He gives it to the backup striker, Levaya, who turns, fires the ball over the bar. And of our 18 shots this evening, only six have tripled the goalkeeper. And we've only got a one-goal lead to take out to Norway. We're ready for the second leg. We're going to go out there with an unchanged lineup. We've not had a league game since the first leg, so the players are reasonably fresh. Cole Palmer comes onto the bench in the only change to the matchday squad. We're also going to stick with our man Milanovic because we've just had a message in our inbox to say that he's now happy to stay at the club. So maybe he might have just put all of his qualms about not being able to move to one of Europe's biggest sides behind him and he might be able to get scoring again because so far this season he's really been a shadow of the player that we had at our disposal when we joined Dinamo at the back end of last season. Every single team talk, Jan Perisic is aggressive. We're going to try and just ask him to calm down before this game. Let's tell him to... Go out there and have some fun. It makes no difference to the boy. He is fired up and ready for red cards. I am nowhere near as confident as making it through this tie as I was when we were first drawn against Odd. I had a little look at their squad and thought this is an outfit that I would fancy us to beat. However, after only winning the first leg 2-1 and as being away in this second leg, I'm certainly nowhere near as confident as I was. I think we're going to need a goal tonight as we've not kept clean sheets since the opening two games of the season. We've started this game brightly, three shots, one on target, but it's odd that have the first highlight of the game. They've got a free kick, 23, 24 yards out, but they curl towards the goal. It goes harmlessly over the bar. We live to fight another day, but we're still going to need to register a goal in this match, I think. We've got a highlight now. We send the ball out to Hamilton Rickard, our right back, over on that side of the pitch. And here is Milanovic. Hopefully now his troubles are behind him and he's going to start being the important player that he was for us earlier on in our tenure. And there he is on cue. He linked up play twice during that move as the deep line forward dropping into the midfield. He was the player that... Got the move going in the first place. He picks up a little ball from Ishek here. And just on the edge of the area, he strikes it past Norm Peterson in goal. And now we can start 
to think about the next round. We might need another goal. We are very leaky at the back. They've only had one shot so far in this first half, and we've looked fairly dominant. So the confidence levels on the bench and in the squad just start to grow a little bit. We're making it through to half time. They've now had three shots. Only one has troubled Valstet in goal. And we look to try and get the job done in the second half. We've done the half-time team talk and Parashik wasn't aggressive. He has actually had the body language of motivated, which was good. Odd come forward right at the start of this second half. They're looking for a quick goal to try and open this tie back up again. They've now had the same number of shots as us. Similar XG as well. So they fought their way back into the game a little bit. We might need to turn to the bench on about 65 minutes in order to give us some fresh impetus. Will we still be ahead on the night by the time we get to those changes? Very nearly not. They hit the woodwork and have another effort that we managed to turn behind for a corner. And in a couple of minutes time, I think we're going to try and freshen our starting lineup up with some arrivals from the bench. We're at that point now. Let's get three fresh substitutes on and see if we can go in search of another goal. We're approaching the 70th minute now. The substitutes are on, but this is a very even game. We might be a goal up on the night. We might have a two-goal lead on aggregate. But I'm not entirely convinced that this game's done just yet. We've made three changes, one in defence, one in midfield, one up front. And we've got a highlight that's got a young 17-year-old centre-half, Paqueta, who's just come onto the pitch, starting the highlight up for us. And there is another of the substitutes we brought on, with a goal that potentially might be ruled out for offside. Pilcic has come on. It's disallowed, which is a shame, because that would have been his first goal of the season. He's moved, not just fraction too early, but far too early. It was a good finish. And the substitutes look like they've livened us up a little. But now Jensen Vasberg comes forward for the Norwegians. And here is Hara, who has an effort that bobbles off a defender, makes its way harmlessly back for Volstedt. And now we've got just 15 minutes left in this tie. We've had 10 shots this evening. We've started to steady ourselves down a little. With just a few minutes left, I think we can get our final two substitutes on. Reshnik is going to come off at left back. And we're going to make another change, I think, in midfield, where we're going to take off Ishik. We're going to bring on Cole Palmer, freshly restored to the bench for this second leg. He's only got a few minutes to get out there and experience European action. Let's see whether he can craft an opportunity for us to score a second goal on the night. There's Perisic, Milanovic, here's Pilcic. He's ridden a tackle, he's ridden two and dinked the ball over the keeper. There is a level of composure we've not seen in his finishing so far this season. and that should put us into the league phase so we know what competition we are going to be aiming to win if we are going to complete the quest. It's going to be the Europa League. That is going to be the tougher route than the Conference League. But we've got the hope that Mulder were in it last season and they faced young boys in the final. So you never know. The miracle could be on and we could be looking to make the final of the Europa League. And here are the games that we've been handed in the league phase. Italian Giants, Fiorentina, Slavia Prague, Royal Antwerp, Israeli opposition, as well as Danish, Valencia, another Norwegian outfit in Bran, and the finalists from last year, Young Boys. It looks like there's some games on there that we should be able to win, and we'd like to try and qualify from the league phase as of right rather than dropping into the playoffs that we were in last time. And I guess the first of these games is going to be Fiorentina in just a few weeks' time. I think that's the tie that we're going to come back for. We're going to be home against the Italians, and we'll see whether we can get the league phase up and running with a victory against one of the biggest sides that must be left in the competition.